Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and there are two new studies that came out in the last couple weeks that I had to bring to your attention on a free nutrient. You don't have to pay for this nutrient, you just have to understand its impact on your health, but more importantly, how it impacts your risk of getting COVID. I'm bringing you the science, a ton of science, Please look in the notes if you wanna link and, and go down rabbit holes of looking at these studies. They're fresh out, off the press and, and I'm bringing them to you, hopefully in a way that you can understand it. But I'm really excited that we're starting to see puzzle pieces we can put together that we realize we have more control over this virus than we're being taught. So enjoy, if you love my videos, please share them out. This is, I do this for you, let's, let's all get immune strong. That has to be our goal. Let's all get immune strong. Subscribe to the channel, send this out, and not only change your life, but let's start working together at changing everybody's life. Hope it helps. Dr. Mindy here, and today I am bringing you some really new science on an old topic. So I wanted to do a video on this because as many of you know who have been following me over the last several months or maybe this last several years, I'm really about empowering you around your health. And right now we have so much fear around our immune system. So what I've been doing is diving into the science and looking at what we know about viruses and specifically the COVID virus. And here we are four months after this outbreak happened and the new science that came out just this week, we are back at vitamin D. And before you go, oh yeah, 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 I know vitamin D, I know vitamin D, I just need to get out into the sun. It is not that easy. You just jumping out into the sun doesn't necessarily mean you will get enough vitamin D. So let me start off by telling you about the study that came out and how it relates to COVID. And then I'm gonna show you how you can get the most out of the sun or out of supplementation if you're doing that and what habits you need to look at that block you from vitamin D. So let's start with this. This is an article, I'll link it in there, July 15th, 2020, the article came out and this is what it said that the active form of vitamin D exerts an immunological activity on multiple components of the innate and adaptive immune system, as well as endothelial membrane stability. Okay, you might be listening to that and going, well, what does that mean? Okay, remember the innate immune system is the immune system that detects the virus. The adaptive immune system is the part of the immune system that creates an army for the virus and your endothelial membrane stability is the, your lung tissue. So the study went on, this is in Nutrients Magazine, went on to say that there is an association between low levels of vitamin D and an increased risk of developing severe immune-related diseases and disorders, including psoriasis, type one diabetes, MS, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, tuberculosis, sepsis, respiratory infection, and COVID-19. New study this week. Then when you start to dive in deeper to the study, what it shows is that vitamin D has an antiviral component, but specifically for respiratory viruses. It also, vitamin D, has the ability to stabilize the destruction of endothelial, endothelial tissues, which is your lungs, and it can be protective of the endothelial tissue in all vascular, your whole vascular system, so even in the arteries. By the way, the reason that it's so important that it's protective of this tissue in your arteries is one of the pieces of why people are dying of COVID-19 is something called thrombosis, where the blood is clotting and destroying that in endothelial tissue, but vitamin D can make that tissue protective and not fall prey to the thrombosis that is occurring within the arteries. The other thing we know about vitamin D is that it stimulates the adaptive immune system, the memory part of the immune system, which are your T and B lymphocytes. And it also will stimulate natural killer cells. Now, there was another study, again, I'm gonna link it in the, in the notes, that came out last week, that this one was a 10-year, it's the, the publication of a 10-year study done 
on over 365,000 people. And what it said is that a reduction in vitamin D is, can cause mortality specifically in cardiovascular disease and in cancers. And the higher the level of vitamin D in cardiovascular disease and cancer, the less mortality after looking at close to 300, over 350,000 people. If you're not convinced, let me tell you that 50% of the population is deficient in vitamin D. So you got to bring this up if you want to be a bad host to this virus. The first study I talked about, the new one that came out this week, went, in to t went on to talk about that one of the things we're seeing with COVID is the summer areas are getting more vitamin D. This is not new information, but there, and then the winter areas of our world have less uh, vitamin D, which is causing a change in outbreaks and also in deaths. So what they said is that you have a two-fold reduction in risk of developing a respiratory disease when you, in summer months, because your vitamin D levels are up. Okay, what should your vitamin D levels be? This is a really important uh, point. So if you haven't by now checked your vitamin D, go check your vitamin D. Your MD is super happy to do that. This is a, a, a test that many doctors are gonna be willing to do. Please go get your vitamin D levels check, checked. And here's what some more science says, that there is historical evidence that our hunter-gatherer forefathers maintained their circulatory vitamin D ranges somewhere between 10 and 50 nanograms per milliliter. So that's what you want it to be, somewhere between 10 and 50, but they also have went on to say that populations like the Hadza tribesmen, which is one of those tribes that lives the longest, has their levels somewhere between 40 and 60 nanograms per, per milliliter. So if you had a vitamin D check, go see if what your vitamin D levels are because they matter. Okay, what do you do with this information? We now, and if you watch the videos I've done, I want you to sort of link all this information. We know metabolic syndrome makes you a good host to the coronavirus. We now know low vitamin D levels makes you a good host to the coronavirus. I've got another nutrient that I'm gonna be talking about next week that if you're deficient in, makes you a good host to the coronavirus. Now it's our personal responsibility, it's our time to start to look within and ask, how can we get out of metabolic syndrome? How can we increase vitamin D? And I'm gonna leave the mystery nutrient for next week. How can you raise the nutrient that I'm gonna teach you about next week? So what I want you to understand is that getting vitamin D and absorbing vitamin D are not the same thing. So if you like put this video down and you went rushing out into the sun just to get sun thinking that's the solution, it's not necessarily the solution because there are some things that prevent you from being able to take UVB light in from the sun and turn it into vitamin D. The first one is sunscreen. So we've been lathering ourselves up with sunscreen. Sunscreen blocks UVB light. Second thing that will affect your absorption, and we're gonna talk a little bit about food on the next video that I put out that will come out on Friday. We're gonna talk about what foods you can be eating, but gut dysbiosis. So you guys with candida and SIBO and all the challenges that are going on in the gut, if you have any gut dysbiosis, you won't absorb vitamin D. So if you haven't run a gut zoomer, run a gut zoomer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just put gut zoomer in the comments and we'll send you a link. And by the way, our Reset Academy, because the gut is so important for your overall health, the month of August, we are taking our Academy members and we are diving into understanding how to repair the gut so that they can be worse hosts to the virus, but also so that they can drop weight and they can get out of metabolic syndrome, they can have more energy, they can get undo the damage that this modern world has done to our gut. Air pollution. If you live in a town where there's a lot of air pollution, the particles, the carbon particles that, from, that form in air pollution block UVB light. So you're not absorbing as much UVB light, which is the light you need to be able to turn that into vitamin D. Okay, obesity. 
So we're back here. Now we're seeing some links. We've got metabolic syndrome. We've got obesity. Well, vitamin D gets stored in your fat and it won't, it gets locked in there. It is not easily released until you start to lose some weight, then it will be released. Again, we want to teach you how to do that. If you're stuck with your metabolism, join us in our academy. And we want to teach you how to let go of that fat so you have access to that vitamin D. And if you look at the British Medical Journal, they did an article showing that one of the challenges is that we have such an obesity problem worldwide that that is one of the things that they are suspecting is causing, contributing to the spread and contributing to the deaths. So I'll link that article. Okay. This is interesting, temperature of your skin. When your skin is warm, you're out on a summer day and you're getting sun, your, your skin is more able to take that UVB light and turn it into vitamin D. In the winter time, it's colder, you're not gonna absorb it as well. And then the last one, you've all probably heard this, is the darker your skin, the more melanin you have and melanin acts like a block to UVB light. So we also know that that in the black community, they also are seeing higher incidences of not only getting this virus, but dying from this virus. If we put metabolic syndrome together with low vitamin D, we've got ourselves a massive problem. So if you have any of those things that I just mentioned, you're gonna need to supplement more. And on Friday, I'll, I'll walk through supplementation. It's not as easy as you just take some pills. There's a lot that you can be doing. I wanna finish up with this thought. I, I know that I've diverged from fasting, I've diverged from keto, but I am on a mission to figure out why so many people are immune compromised. And you have control. So let's work on getting your metabolism right. You can do that through keto and fasting like I teach you here. Now on Friday, I'm gonna show you the three best ways that you can work on getting more vitamin D so you're actually absorbing it. Next week, I'm gonna show you what nutrient that gets depleted when we have a lot of toxins in our body and how you can bring that up. And when you start to put all these pieces together, now you walk around and you're, in, you're focused, you have, you're immune strong, you're not fearful of the virus coming in contact because you've done the best job you possibly can to bring your immune system up. So let me know how this is landing on you. Let me know what you're doing to increase vitamin D. Um, and if you wanna join us in our academy, just put Reset Academy. If you're ready to detox with us and start to really ramp up your immune system, please join us in the toxin, toxin Reset. But do not let fear take this over. Do not let the media tell you you have no control because you have more control than they are telling you and the science is telling you you have more control. Hope that helps.